The sealer has been drying for about, oh, I'd say three hours and it's sanding out pretty easy. I just put some 400 on my rubber block and without even pushing down on it, I'm just kind of sliding it back and forth. And you can see that it is clearly sanding out. So you can still see a few little spots where it was there and I'll finish sanding that out and then it was my second coat when it started spitting the water out and uh, the first coat went on fine the second one I'm like seeing this going on the paint as I'm sanding I'll show you what I do you know with painting there's the air hose I typically use when I paint hanging up there a nice place for it so first off I have an air dryer on the compressor and then this goes to an air hose I just have there and then I had the air hose I was using clipped on here which is that air hose so I actually disconnected it from here and reconnected it to where I paint from so I, I clearly wasn't thinking to disconnect it from here but that's just my first air dryer that dries the air for my air tools and blow gun and whatnot then this valve here that's off that's on turns on the air supply to the bead blast cabinet which is where I have my air dryer I use to paint so let me go show you that this is the air dryer I use for painting so this is a dryer this is a dryer and a regulator the air pressure comes out of the compressor into this dryer from that first dryer you saw in the compressor so this is the second dryer in the system so that's full compressor pressure then I have a regulator to bring it down to spring pressure and the reason why I put the regulator between is because usually where you have a regulator you can get moisture so I regulate down to whatever I'm spraying with I think this is set at 60 psi I do have another regulator right at my uh, gun but then it comes into here at lower pressure so it dries the air three times I really I really have to say I never get water out of the fitting here this is what goes to the blast cabinet you got to use as dry air in your blast cabinet as you do for painting because water will cause the media to like get hard and crusty so you don't want any moisture in your blast cabinet but that's what goes to the blast cabinet so then I just disconnect the blast cabinet, hook my paint hose to there. That's what I originally made this just for painting and nothing else. And But I do use it. I should make a second one of these just for the blast cabinet. I made, welded up the frame. You know, it's all just pretty simple. And uh, made it all 100% myself. You know, obviously I bought these three items, but... All this metal I just cut and welded up. So that's what dries my air that goes to the air hose to spray the car. I I wasn't getting moisture out of here. I was getting it out of the hose. The, the hose was sitting plugged in, laying on the floor, full of compressed air, probably with condensation and moisture. And when you compress air, you get moisture in it. And I'll show you what I mean by that, too. If that shows up under there, that is the drain for the air compressor tank. And I usually just, what I do is I crack this open a little bit. Let me get, the, let me, uh, get that loosened up and I'll show you the water in the tank. You know, it's pretty typical to get water and compress it. Now that is just cracked loose. The white is because you get a little oil from the rings in the compressor. In the, but I just opened this valve and these turn the left hand treads but I just opened that valve enough to let the so this has probably been a month since I've drained the tank so that's all I do is just open it up a little bit like that and that lets the water out of the tank from compressing air which is you know extremely common like I say to get water in your compressed air so you can see it's still spitting out and I'll let it spit out just gently like that you know there's no point in opening up and blowing all the pressure off so I'm going to drain the water and then uh, pump the compressor back up 
there's the water that I got out of the tank. So it's not a lot, you know, maybe a, a pint of water that was in the tank. You know, when you compress, that's one thing nice with these upright compressors. You know, they get terrarium effect when they're running, so the air, as you compress air, it gets hot. And so the top tank will get warm, and it's just literally, you know, it rains probably in the tank when this gets really hot you know from running it continuously running air tools and stuff like DAs and air files and stuff when it runs a lot that's why you get the water in the in the tank and then my air traps have a little automatic drain so when the pressure is released from the from the trap it automatically drains now this is actually I'm gonna unscrew that you can unscrew these I'm gonna take that off and clean it you can see a little oil in there and you know just kind of moisture and stuff but the air is there's no pressure as you can see because I can push up this and that drips out you can see where it's dripped on this case here over the years and uh, and the same with those other air dryers when you turn the the air off and they lose pressure they tend to drip out you can see the filter and then this is the water so they're all three filter dryers so you get good clean air out for painting or for bead blasting. And, uh, but like I say, this one, I just took my air hose there and you get a little water out of this. That's why I have three of them. And uh, plus you just get it naturally in the air hose from the air being compressed. That's just the way it is when you compress air. There's no getting around it. So if I turn this on, there you can see the air kind of stirred up the water and it purged a little moisture out there but I'll turn that off and I'll I'll blow the pressure off and then clean that out too. I'm taking my air dryers apart and cleaning them this really wasn't too bad and uh, you know so I I can uh, make sure that there's no water in these I haven't cleaned these and I can't remember one but we'll uh, give them all a quick wipe out and clean and hopefully then yeah there's crud in there so i'll clean these out put them back together and uh hopefully that'll solve any any water issues and i pressurized them made sure you can see the pressures up make sure they're not leaking they're all clean all air dryers are clean i sanded the trunklet out this is still same day and uh, it came out really nice. This is where the worst of it was. It was basically a patch right in here, a little patch in here, and what you see up here, a little bit there and there, and then there's a, a little area right there, and that's it on the quarter panel. So I'm gonna sand out the top here. I think I'm gonna sand it all the way around and uh, the top because that you know it's like blocking and it'll take out any imperfections this side has no water in it i'm going to scuff this side because it'll be over 24 hours but i'm going to do that tomorrow morning and uh i'm going to scuff this out after i sand this i might work on sanding a little bit of this this evening and uh but the trunk lids sanded out well I'm happy with it I had the first coat on and I was on the second coat the end of the second coat when that happened so it's just uh it's got sealer you know it was sealed the, the water landed on the sealer so I didn't have to go right down to the bare metal or the primer so I got all uh, what was needed to be sanded out which was basically the top of this to about here and just a couple little spots there and a little spot here. <laughs> but I sand it out a little further because I noticed a spot, like a low spot, you know, where it wasn't sanded good, so I blocked that too. And I think I'm gonna stop here, and tomorrow I'll scuff it with the scuff pad and uh, try and shoot some green paint on it and see what happens. Hopefully it, uh, you know, it comes out and uh, looks good but I might sand might sand the after dinner I might come out and just sand this 
top bit out right here too just because I think it would look a little nicer. It's a big flat area and just doesn't hurt. But everything else, you know, I mean, it all looks pretty darn good. Didn't really have much of any body work on this side. This side was really solid. The body work was really on this side, just this bottom a little bit and just this little bit of corner here. So it looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy. I think, uh, I think it's going to look good once it's painted. Did I show this thing completely sanded out? I 400 sanded the whole, everything sealed. I just think that, you know, it will turn out better. It's like doing another blocking. I mean, the sealer was actually, one coat of sealer would have probably done the job. I probably didn't need to shoot a second coat on after. Was basically, I sanded the second coat off because that was where the water spit out of the gun. This side here didn't have any water spits whatsoever. This side had them on the top here. Most of them were concentrated right in here. There was a few right in here. There was a few in here and a few right in here and the rest of it was good. But as you can see, it's all sanded out really nicely ready for paint and the trunk lid which was the worst oh my god this was really bad really sanded out well I mean it came out perfect this didn't have any water spots on this part the only water spots are on this top surface here and uh so that is 100% sanded and I'm just I'm not going to put a second Another coat of sealer because I don't want the sealer too thick on the car. Like I say, I think one coat of sealer would have been sufficient. I didn't realize it was that, you know, that it, that it really goes on that, that heavy. So I'm just going to go right to paint. It's been 24 hours. It's sanded. It says to sand it if it's over 24 hours. It's actually a little under 24 hours by about a half an hour. But um, it's all sanded out, and I'm going to start mixing up the green, and hopefully it uh, goes good. Hopefully. It's green. Looks really good. The sides came out 100% perfect. There's a little bit of modeling on the on the top but I put the paint on a little heavier and it's flowing out like glass really super happy there's a couple little specks of dirt here and there little 600 sand out and buff or whatever there's a little tiny bit of modeling or modding or whatever you call it right in here and the rest of it's all perfecto and the trunk lid this side, surface here, perfect. This surface has a lot of modding, modeling on it. You can see it clearly in the video. So I think what I'm going to do in the fall is I'm going to take the hood and the trunk lid off. I'm going to hood strip the hood because it's been recoated once. This I'm just going to sand out with some 400. And I'm going to hang them. That's how I usually paint these things hanging. I rarely ever paint them like this. So I'm going to hang them and respray them in the fall, the hood and the trunk lid, so they look like that. All the sides on this car came out really nice. It's just the surfaces that I painted that were laying flat that look like heck. And it's still tacky. Can you see? There. And it's been maybe an hour. Uh, so it's still flowing out. And, uh, but I'm really, 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 really happy with the sides. The only part I'm not happy with is the top of the trunk lid. And, uh, for now it's going to do for the summer. And because I want to get the door finished and get the car back together. And like I said, it's no big deal. I can pop the trunk lid and the hood off in the fall and, uh, reshoot them. That's no biggie at all. And, uh. Stuff like this is no, you know, it doesn't really worry me, you know, because I can correct it. I can, and I can see a dent 
little tiny dent I missed right in here. I mean, it's so minuscule, but you get the light just right and you can see it in how thick sat too. And the gas tank door came out perfect. There's no, I repaired that without body filler. I don't know if I can get the light good on it or not, but I'm not going to try and unhang it. Set that there so I wouldn't walk into it, but yeah, the gas door really came out nice. So the key, I think, is from now on is going to be spraying things vertically. No more of this horizontal spraying of body panels. I just, I don't know what it is with this, this metallic green is like so metallic. Really difficult paint to spray and I don't know what it is with when they're sitting flat like this why they do what they do only the flat surfaces the doors the fenders none of the sides do that just the tops and uh, so that's I guess maybe I just maybe I don't have the experience with this highly metallic paint because a lot of the cars majority of the cars like from the 50s and stuff don't have a lot of metallic or no metallic even. You didn't really start seeing the metallics until the 60s. And I've done a number of cars from the 60s, even the 70s, and I've done a number of metallics, but this is uh, the worst by far to spray. And, uh, but I'm really happy with, uh, with the appearance. I think I'll let it dry to the touch and then I'll demask it. And uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to leave that back door open. It's about 55, 56 out. It's probably about, oh, I don't know, 65 in the garage. Let's go see what the, th I have the heat turned off. I don't want duster. It's 64 in the garage. And I have the heat turned off, you know, so because that circulates the air around in here and can stir up dirt. So I'm just going to leave the heat off until that's all dry to the touch. When it's dry to the touch, I'll crank the heat up and start demasking. So that'll be a few hours yet. So I'm going to go in and have lunch. I cleaned the spray gun already. And uh, like I say, I'm thrilled with the way that the quarter panels turned out. I just couldn't be happier with them. They were kind of a big area to where if I had to sand them out and redo it, that's a lot of work. Trunk lid, not a lot of work. That's no big deal. So, yeah, I'm pleased that came out good. That was my concern right there. So that is it for this video. I have no clue if I have paint on my face or how messy it could be. It doesn't really matter with this uh, coronavirus stay-at-home order still in effect. Um, it's not like I'm going out in the public to impress anybody. But anyway, here we are at the end of the video. I want to thank everyone for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want to see this car all back together and paint it up, subscribe to my channel. And next is the passenger side door, and then the body and paint will be done on the car. I'm going to put it together and do some cruising, obviously with the old chrome and no top and black wall tires because I'm just not going to spend the money on that kind of stuff right now. So the tires that are on the car are about three years old and they're in good shape. They're, I don't think there's any miles on them. And uh, yeah, they are, you can see the faintness of the dirty white wall. Um, they're P205 70R15s and uh, so anyway, I'll clean them up. I got to clean the wheels up and paint them. I'll have the, t when I get new tires, they're general tires, by the way. So I state the, the brand. But I'll clean the wheels up. When I get new tires, I'll break them down, bead blast the wheels, paint them, and then uh, we'll uh, put new tires on. But that's going to be down the road because, you know, I got to watch my, finances hardcore. I have, I'm a self-employed home inspector and I haven't had any work in eight weeks now, nine weeks. And uh, who knows when I'll start making money again. I also do a lot of side work and uh, I've had no income for nine weeks now. So I got to really, really, I, I don't want to dip into savings for this car. 
all the money I spent, I bought this car and spent on it has been from an account I use just for my hobby cars. And I try and build that account up from car to car. And, uh, you know, so I have more and more for next cars and next cars. And, you know, I had 10000 in it for this car. And uh, right now I've gone over that and I still got, you know, thousand dollars worth of tires for five tires mounted and balanced will probably be hit a thousand or twelve hundred and the chrome will probably be about fifteen hundred and the convertible top will probably be a couple grand if I have someone do it so yeah I'm not spending that kind of money now maybe in the fall or next spring um, may have the top done just so it has a convertible top over the winter but um, it's not important. I can drive it without the top. I don't take my cars out in crummy weather if I don't need to. So I'm not going to worry about getting caught in the rain with it. I probably will hardly drive the car this year. Probably be those rare occasions I do take it out. But I probably, you know, because I'm not going to go to any car cruises this year. The Woodward Dream Cruise, none of that. And uh, might take it out and do a lap or two on Woodward, you know, when there's cars out. But... As far as participating to where I'm close to people, that's just not going to happen. But anyway, again, thank you for watching my videos.